video we're going to talk about the parent reciprocal function and its basic characteristics but this is one of our parent functions we want to memorize its shape first before we start transforming it but its function okay is this one right here we say f of x is 1 over x okay another way to write this you see it sometimes is x to the negative 1 so I'm clicking this one in here and we're going to start by taking a look at the graph we'll head over to GeoGebra head down here to the input field but we want uh, f of x equals to 1 divided by x and so we'll go ahead and hit enter you notice what we get this is actually all one graph do not worry about it and as a matter of fact if I were to shut off my axes okay so like uh, I don't know, we'll click off to the side here uh, axes off you notice that this graph here doesn't cross the x value 0 here and it never gets to a height of 0 but there's an asymptote at both of these values y equals 0 and x equals 0 but this is all one graph okay? you have to trust me on this one so we say these are two branches of a hyperbola that is the name of this graph so to make this a little bit clearer to see we'll go ahead and right click on it object properties we will make it red and we increase the thickness here and we'll just go ahead and copy and paste this over into our uh, Photoshop canvas we only need a part of it anyway so I've clicked and drag it is shift control C or shift command C go ahead and minimize this we'll head over here and just paste it in so here is here is our reciprocal function interesting properties about this function let's go ahead and discuss a few of them starting with dun, 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 the domain of this function now notice the function itself like the actual rule we say domain are all input values that when I stick them into the function I get a y value back so you'll notice here that I've written the domain in interval notation as this all x values starting way out at negative infinity so way over here on the left up to but not including the x value 0 and then it actually starts up at 0 doesn't include 0 notice I put an open parenthesis over here and then goes out to positive x values out to positive infinity uh, we can't plug in 0 and the reason why is because 1 divided by 0 is undefined okay so we say it's these two intervals really it's all real numbers except for that 0 because we put open brackets on it we were leaving out the 0 okay this little u right here just means that it is the union of these two sets that is the domain is the gathering of those two sets of numbers as far as range goes take a look at your graph you know you notice your graph never reaches a height of 0 it totally hits all these negative heights and it totally hits all these positive ones and it gets really close to a height of 0 way out here on the ends but never gets to a height of 0 so like the domain we say the range of this graph is uh, negative infinity up to 0 from way down here up to 0 to a height of 0 skips over 0 and starts up at 0 just beyond it and proceeds up forever and ever okay we say this is an odd function okay so recall from previous videos we say odd function what does that mean about my function well an odd function is any function that if you were to take it and not plug in x but plug in a negative x you would get negative out front f of x or negative the thing you started with so just to kind of demonstrate this if I had the function y equals 1 over x the same as f of x equals 1 over x what if I were to plug in f of negative x so that means in my expression everywhere I see an x will take it out I'll plug in a negative x but if I were to do this you know I'm not squaring it or taking it to the fourth notice that I get this I would get uh, essentially negative 1 over x and so what I want to point out is this this 1 over x part is kind of like the original f of x to begin with okay so really what we got was this negative and I'll just throw in this f of x down here for 1 over x we say negative f of x so in other words when we plugged in f of negative x we got negative f of x and so basically negative the thing I started with I you know if I plug it in I get negative that thing right there you know it's the opposite what this means though is that it's symmetric with respect to the origin or about the identity function y equals x and so hopping back over to GeoGebra just very briefly here if I were to graph you know y equals x Notice that we have some symmetry about that identity function y equals x here, okay? You know, you can see it folding over very nicely. Uh, the graph doesn't have any intercepts, okay? So it never hits the x-axis, never hits the y-axis. We could at least understand why it would never hit the y-axis because x is never allowed to be 0. If I plug in a 0, it's undefined, okay? And as far as the no x-intercept goes, we'll talk about that more later this year when we talk about limits out at infinity and negative infinity. All right, so you notice this graph. It's actually from left to right. It's decreasing, decreasing. And even when I start way back up here again, decreasing. So the interesting thing is you would like to say it's always decreasing for every x value. But remember, we couldn't use the x value 0. 
So when I say what x values on the, on the x number line here is it decreasing for, going downhill, have negative slope for, we'd say on the intervals from way out here at negative infinity up to but not including 0, for those x values my graph is going downhill. And for all the x values 0 out to positive infinity, we'd say for this one starting here and going all the way out to the right, my graph is also decreasing. Okay. And so we've already mentioned that it's uh, symmetrical with respect to the origin. Of all the parent functions we have discussed in all of my videos, at least, thus far, we'll go ahead and graph them all together now. They've all had something in common. Notice I've got y equals x squared, or sorry, y equals x graph. That's our line, our identity function. We have a reciprocal function graph, but if I type in y equals x squared, for instance, or y equals x cubed, or y equals sqrt of x, square root of x, well, we can go ahead and take a look here. We'll zoom in a little bit. But essentially, what I want us to see is this. They all start at 0, 0, with the exception of our hyperbola. Okay, Our hyperbola does not start at 0, 0. But do they all have something else in common? And the answer to that is yes. It actually goes through the point 1, 1. Every single function, our line, our quadratic, our cubic here, our square root, and even our hyperbola all proceed through 1, 1. So the thing to keep in mind is this. The hyperbola may not go through 0, 0, but one could necessarily say it's kind of centered about the point 0, 0, the origin, and could go up one, right one to get to its next point. And if you knew that point, you could just basically memorize the other shape or the rest of the shape of the graph. Enjoy!